Are these sneakers really not from here? Let's find out. Bye everyone, Marches here. Welcome to the channel. For today's video, I'll be giving you my performance review of the Puma MB2. But before we go to the performance review of the MB2, I would just like to talk about again the bag that I've been really in love with. And because I'm in love with it right now, I actually bought two more and I got the Lux edition. This is one of two. I had the backpack and of course this one's the duffel bag. I got the backpack which is smaller. I'll show you that bag in the next video but let's talk about this bag first. The duffel is also also ultra nice. Ultra luxurious. Look at that. And it has this monogram print to it. So it's texturized, it's just not print. So this is real leather, real premium leather that is ultra soft to the touch mm. and what Soul Premise said that it could fit four sneakers maximum I think and for me ideally it's two sneakers because of the two areas or the two compartments that you can put your sneakers Let's put it here so this one so it has this gold zipper that really gives a very nice accent to the bag and give it a little bit more luxurious or stylish accents to this duffel bag and when you open it you can put one pair of sneakers here so i'm currently a size 11 and i think you could fit until size 15. so here another pair so, so that's two and of course on top you could fit two more to make it four i tried it out and it fits four sneakers but ideally i'll just put two sneakers then put my clothes on top, my jersey, my towel, etc. My camera equipment. And there's a nice compartment too here inside. You can put your wallet here for safety. Look how deep the bag is. You can see it from the top. And in front, there's the Soul Premise logo here, which is the gold metallic SP. And it comes with a very nice tag too for a name tag with a gold lock too. And all locks are made out of gold and even the, the body strap here is made out of leather and it is padded to give extra comfort around your shoulders when you're carrying it that way. And at the back there is another zipper here where you can put your things and there's a sliding thing here that when you are traveling you can hang this over at your luggage your trolley handle and you could insert this one so that it won't fall off your trolley luggage so it's not really just made for gym use but you can use it for traveling so that's what soul premise is targeting really that you can use it for the gym you could use it for traveling at the same time too and still looking looking good a lot of nba players have been using the soul premise bag and guys if you purchase here in the link that i'll be putting up here you'll get 40 percent off or just use my mark chess code for x of 40 percent and of course i'll be getting a commission out of that it's an affiliate link hopefully you can support me and support this channel now let's get into the performance review of the MB2. So this is Lamella Ball's second signature sneaker from Puma. Let's talk about the upper first of course. The upper on the twos is kind of different from the ones. It has more mesh upper all throughout and it's like the screen mesh type of mesh material that goes from the forefoot to the back part of the sneaker and of course for durability they added some fusing around the toe area and of course that also gives extra support and if you can see this metallic parts on the lateral part of the sneaker is also for durability and extra support that the material won't stretch that much when you're playing and it really does its job and even on the medial part can see this blue area is also 
also some more fusing on the sneaker and this is actually the away colorway there's actually the supernova one that is orange which i have in my mb1 and for performance wise the upper is really really nice in terms of support especially lateral support and durability it didn't have any problems and there was no delay in the materials there was no stretch so when i was doing some lateral cuts or when i was doing some side steps the material didn't cause any delay because it didn't stretch it's very well ventilated it's quite thin for this kind of upper because on the ones it was kind of thicker so it's not that too well ventilated but this one is more on the more ventilated side of things and as for the tongue part it has this jersey like material which you can see there's some perforations there from the forefoot part of the tongue to the last part of the tongue it's very nicely padded and it's very comfortable around your foot the lacing system is just your traditional lacing system it goes in this fuse holes i just wish that they added some more like a wing type material or a string that kind of hugs or gives extra lockdown to the sneaker but so far the lockdown is good the fit of the sneaker was really nice around my foot i'm a regular footer and this mb2 fits me quite nicely so this is more on the narrow side if you can see the top of the shoe it's kind of slim or it's kind of low here and on top of it you can see the material really concaving inwards and there is not a lot of toe space above your foot so watch out for that if you're a wide footer but if you're a regular footer or narrow footer i think the mb2's fit and shape will be favorable to you for the heel part of the sneaker as you can see it's a mid-cut sneaker heel containment lockdown was very good on the mb2 if you have the mb1 and you like the lockdown on those you will surely love the mb2's lockdown too and the cushion the achilles pillows are not as thick as the ones but still very comfortable around your heel and ankle and of course if you want to really have extra more ankle protection or that peace of mind you can lace it up until the last day soup i laced mine until here because i want more ankle movement and it still gave me a good ankle protection to the sneaker but of course ankle protection really comes from the heel cup of the sneaker and the base of the heel if it's stable around here and the heel cup really contains your heel quite nicely so that there's no space for your heel to move or wobble so that it will give you the stability that you need around your ankle and heel that's where the real ankle protection is coming from so the mb2 even though it's quite a narrow sneaker i was still quite surprised that it's still very very stable and the cushion setup wasn't too low to the ground but it was still very very stable which i was really surprised with with the mb2 i thought it will be a little unstable but when i was playing i wasn't very conscious on my movement uh, i really played organically and with a nice flow that i didn't have to worry about the stability of the mb2 so really quite surprised with that on the mb2 that it was a really stable sneaker given that it's a narrow sneaker and it is kind of a little bit higher off the ground as for the insole of the mb2 it's just a ordinary ortholite insole i just wish that they gave us a more premium one but not complaining that much now let's move on to the cushion of the mb2 which is a full length nitro foam and around the forefoot part of the cushion around here there is a puck that gives you extra lift there's a different kind of foam i don't know what kind of foam is that i just know that this full slab is a nitro injected foam or maybe it's a dual density nitro injected foam it has a more bouncier puck here in the forefoot and that's what i felt on the mb2 and a little disclaimer on the mb2's cushion when initially you're playing with it it really needs break-in time to the sneaker you really need to warm up the cushion 
before you feel the impact protection, the plushness of the Nitro Foam. The Nitro Foam on the MP2 is not the bouncy type of Nitro Foam, but if you are looking for some impact protection, if you are stepping really hard on the floor, if you play that hard, you step that hard. I know a friend of mine who plays like that, he really steps really hard on his side steps and on his hop steps and he really enjoyed playing with his MB2 and I think the MB2 cushion is made for those type of players when they are going for a layup or when they're jumping or for a heavier guard or for a big man I think you will enjoy the cushion on the MB2 but if you're looking for bounciness I think you have to look for something else the nitro injected foam on the MB2s was really kind of a sweet surprise because when I played with it, I was expecting that the cushion would be dead. But the first time that I used this on a hardwood surface, the cushion really felt really nicely and my knees were really thanking the MB2 after I played with them. Now moving on to the traction of the MB2 which has the swing-like pattern and this is one of the favorite things that I love on the MB2. I think this is the highlight of the MB2. It's a huge improvement on the traction of the MB2 from the MB1 because of this very thin blade-like traction and it's pliable, it's very stretchy. So with that combination, the sneaker really gives a very nice traction to the floor. And I saw some of my teammates and opponents were using uh, Kyrie's, Kobe's, and they were kind of slipping out in the floor because the floor was kind of dusty. But for me, I was sticking really nicely to the floor and I just need a little wipe when dust tends to build up on the traction but after a small wipe then I'm good to go and I didn't experience any slipping when I was playing all throughout the game and it was a league game and I really need to do exaggerated moves on the floor and I didn't experience any slipping on the floor and there was one guy or my teammate that was using the Kyrie, I think it was the Kyrie Sevens, and he was really being careful on his movements because he was kind of slipping. And given that the Kyrie Seven has a very nice traction, and it was happening to him, so that goes to speak a lot on the traction on the MB2 because I wasn't slipping in it. As for the heel to toe transition of the MB2, it has a very nice curve on the forefoot, and it has a nice subtle curve here on the ball of your foot in the forefoot part so that when you're doing crossover or when you're doing your first step it gives you a very very natural feel that it gives the sneaker some room to roll so that you'll be on the ball of your foot when you're doing a first step give you a very natural movement on your steps as for the lateral trigger or the base in the forefoot, it has enough but it's kind of on the narrow side but like I said, I didn't feel, experience any instability on the MB2 because I think the upper is very supportive, even the cushion is very supportive too. It doesn't really compress that easily so that's a very nice combination in terms of the support to the sneaker. As for the weight of the MB2s, it is 455 on a US 11, so, so that's an average weight on my sneakers. So it's not too heavy, it's not too light for a mid-top sneaker. For the price of the MB2s, it is 140 US dollars, but it's more expensive here in the Philippines, which sucks because 140 is around 6,000 or to 7,000 pesos depending on the exchange rate. But this one is selling here at around 8,800, which is quite expensive. But if you're a Mellow fan and if you want to try Puma basketball sneaker, the MB2 is a sneaker that is dependable because of the traction, the cushion. If you're looking for more impact protection, the MB2 will give you that. And of course, a ton of support on the upper. So that's it on my performance review of the MB02. Let me know what your thoughts are on the sneaker. Hit me a comment down below. This has been Marches once again. Thank you for dropping by. I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.